the integral test. If a sub k equals f of k, where f is continuous, decreasing, and positive on the interval from 1 to infinity, then the series, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k, and the improper integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx, either both converge or both diverge. Now let's try to understand why this is true. Suppose this is the graph of f. Let's draw a rectangle with height f of k over each subinterval from k minus 1 to k, where k is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Then we can think of a sub k as the area of the kth rectangle, and we can think of the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k as the total area of all of these rectangles. Now, all of these rectangles except the first one lie inside of the region under the graph of f. Therefore, we can conclude that the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of a sub k is less than the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. Consequently, if the improper integral is finite, then the series is finite. Now let's shift all of these rectangles to the right one unit. Then the region under the curve is contained inside the union of all of the rectangles, and consequently, the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx is less than the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k. This proves that if the series is finite, then the improper integral is also finite. p-series. These are series of the form, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the pth power, which equals 1 plus 1 over 2 to the p plus 1 over 3 to the p, and so on, where p is positive. When p is 1, this is the harmonic series, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k, equal to 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third, and so on. And the related improper integral is the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. This is equal to the natural log of x evaluated from 1 to infinity, which equals the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of x minus the natural log of 1, which is 0, and the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of x is equal to infinity. Since this improper integral diverges, so does the harmonic series. If p is not equal to 1, the related improper integral is the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p dx. Since the integrand is x to the minus p power, the integral is equal to x to the minus p plus 1 divided by minus p plus 1, evaluated from 1 to infinity, which equals 1 over 1 minus p times the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the 1 minus p minus 1. Now, since the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the 1 minus p exists if and only if the exponent 1 minus p is negative, we conclude that the improper integral, and therefore the series, converges if p is greater than 1 and diverges when p is less than 1. Now, we already know that the series diverges when p equals 1, and so a p-series, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the p, converges if p is greater than 1 and diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. For example, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared converges, and the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of k diverges. Example, does the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over k times log k converge or diverge? Now, before we try to answer this question, let's point out that the partial sums here grow very, very slowly. In fact, the sum from k equals 2 to 1,000 of 1 over k times log k is equal to 2.727, but that really tells us nothing about whether the series converges or not. So let's use the integral test to determine whether the series converges. We need to compute the integral from 2 to infinity of dx over x times log x. We'll do this by means of the substitution u equals natural log of x, for which du is equal to 1 over x dx. We'll change the limits of integration by noting that when x is 2, u is equal to the natural log of 2, and as x goes to infinity, u also goes to infinity. So we have the integral from the natural log of 2 to infinity 
of du over u. This equals the natural log of u, evaluated from natural log of 2 to infinity. And since the limit as u goes to infinity of natural log of u equals infinity, we conclude that the improper integral diverges, and therefore the series diverges. So even though the 1,000th partial sum is only 2.727, the partial sums eventually become greater than any real number. Another example. Does the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over k times the square of the natural log of k converge or diverge? Let's use the integral test again. We want to compute the integral from 2 to infinity of dx over x times the square of the natural log of x. We can actually make exactly the same substitution as in the previous example, and that gives us the integral from the natural log of 2 to infinity of du over u squared. This equals minus 1 over u evaluated from the natural log of 2 to infinity, which equals the limit as u goes to infinity of minus 1 over u minus minus 1 over the natural log of 2. And since the limit as u goes to infinity of 1 over u is 0, we have 1 over the natural log of 2. Now the particular value here doesn't really matter. We only care that the improper integral is convergent, and that tells us that the series converges. The remainder. Let the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k be a convergent series. Its nth remainder is defined as r sub n equal to the sum from k equals n plus 1 to infinity of a sub k. For any n greater than or equal to 1, the sum of the series is equal to the sum of the nth partial sum and the nth remainder. Let's write out the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k as a1 plus a2 and so on up to a sub n, plus a sub n plus 1, plus a sub n plus 2, and so on. The sum of the first n terms is the nth partial sum, and the sum of the remaining terms is the nth remainder, r sub n. So the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k is equal to the nth partial sum plus the nth remainder for all n greater than or equal to 1, and the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n is equal to 0, since the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n is equal to the sum of the series. Estimating the remainder. Suppose that a sub k is equal to f of k, where f is continuous, decreasing, and positive on the interval from 1 to infinity. Let's look at the graph of f near an arbitrary integer n. The rectangles indicated here have areas a sub n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, a sub n plus 3, and so on. So the sum of those areas is equal to the nth remainder r sub n. Since all of these rectangles lie underneath the curve to the right of n, we conclude that the nth remainder is less than the integral from n to infinity of f of x dx. So we have an upper bound on the nth remainder. On the other hand, if we shift all of these rectangles to the right by 1, it becomes clear that the nth remainder is greater than the integral from n plus 1 to infinity of f of x dx. So we also have a lower bound on the nth remainder. The upper bound here is the more useful of these estimates, and we'll make use of it in the following way. If the integral from n to infinity of f of x dx is less than or equal to a number epsilon, then we can conclude that the nth remainder is between 0 and epsilon. That is, we can conclude that the difference between the sum of the series and the nth partial sum is between 0 and epsilon. And consequently, the sum of the series is between the nth partial sum and the nth partial sum plus epsilon. Example. Use a partial sum to approximate the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared plus 1 with an error of less than 0.01. We begin by computing the upper estimate on the nth remainder given by the integral from n to infinity of dx over x squared plus 1. Our antiderivative here is the inverse tangent of x, so we have the inverse tangent of x evaluated from n to infinity. The limit as x goes to infinity of the inverse tangent of x is equal to pi over 2, and from that we subtract inverse tangent of n. So in order that r sub n be less than or equal to 0.01, .01, 
we want pi over 2 minus inverse tangent of n to be less than or equal to 0 0.01. That's equivalent to inverse tangent of n greater than or equal to pi over 2 minus 0 0.01 which is equivalent to n greater than or equal to the tangent of pi over 2 minus 0 0.01. And that number rounds up to 100. So we need to compute the 100th partial sum. The sum from k equals 1 to 100 of 1 over k squared plus 1 equals 1 half plus 1 fifth plus 1 tenth and so on up to 1 over 10,001. That sum turns out to be 1.06672 rounded off to five decimal places. And so now we can conclude that the sum of the full series is greater than 1.06672 and less than 1.07672. Example. Use a partial sum to approximate the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k divided by 2 to the k with an error of less than 0.001. We'll begin by computing the upper estimate on the nth remainder given by the integral from n to infinity of x times 2 to the minus x power dx. And we'll use integration by parts to compute the integral. We let u equal x and dv equal 2 to the minus x dx. That makes du equal dx and v equal to an antiderivative of 2 to the minus x. Recall that an antiderivative of 2 to the x is 1 over the natural log of 2 times 2 to the x, and so an antiderivative of 2 to the minus x equals minus 1 over log 2 times 2 to the minus x. And so the integral is now u times v, or minus x over the natural log of 2 times 2 to the minus x, evaluated from n to infinity, minus the integral from n to infinity of v du, which is plus 1 over the natural log of 2 times the integral from n to infinity of 2 to the minus x dx. Now x times 2 to the minus x approaches 0 as x goes to infinity, and so the first term here is simply minus minus n over natural log of 2 times 2 to the minus n. When we anti-differentiate 2 to the minus x, we pick up another factor of 1 over the natural log of 2, and so the second term here becomes minus 1 over the square of the natural log of 2 times 2 to the minus x evaluated from n to infinity. The limit as x goes to infinity there is equal to 0, and so we have minus the value at n, which gives us n over the natural log of 2 times 2 to the minus n plus 1 over the natural log of 2 squared times 2 to the minus n. And all of that simplifies to n times the natural log of 2 plus 1 divided by the square of the natural log of 2 times 2 to the n. So now our problem is to find out how large n needs to be in order that that quantity is less than or equal to 0 0.001. A good way to do that is just to graph the equation y equals x times log 2 plus 1 over the square of log 2 times 2 to the x. That graph is shown here, and the graph makes it clear that that quantity is less than or equal to 0 0.001 when x is greater than roughly 14.5. So we take n equal to 15 here and compute the 15th partial sum. That partial sum is 1 half plus 2 over 4 plus 3 over 8 and so on up to 15 over 2 to the 15th, which turns out to be 1.99948 rounded to five decimal places. Now you may recall that in a previous lecture, we found out that the sum of this series is exactly 2. So notice that our 15th partial sum here is in fact within 0.001 of the exact sum of the series.